What's up? What's up? What's up, everybody? It's Friday morning. Welcome to today's edition of the Daily Market Commentary. I'm your host, Chuck Fulkerson. I hope everybody had a great trading day yesterday. Yesterday, we didn't have a Daily Market Commentary as we had our live trading room. And uh, so you'll see some of the lines that are on the charts come from yesterday's live trade room as we you know, yesterday we saw that the GDP numbers came out. We had Apple from the, uh, Apple earnings and all the big company earnings, and it definitely caused some market movement. Uh, a little bit for us to be up today, but we're closing back in on an all-time high in the Nasdaq. We're at an all-time high in gold, which brings me to today's saying, which I say over and over again: things you never do. You don't tug on Superman's cape. You don't spit into the wind, and you don't short the all-time high. Um, this is our, our Trader's Army swag. By the way, if you guys are interested in, in, uh, in, in any of our cool Trader's Army swag, go to tradersarmy.com slash pay it forward. Uh, we actually use 100% of anything we, uh, we get from our, our merchandise stuff to fund local charities and support uh, some of the things that we do uh, for in, a, in a community standpoint. So it's kind of a fun way for us to, to fund some of the charity things that we do. And I think the shirts are pretty cool. But anyway... All right, let's go ahead and get started uh, with today's market. So starting with the S&P. So the ES this morning, we are up about five points. Now, yesterday we had a little bit of a supply level identified right up in here. And the market did come into that supply level later in the day. Now, that was off of a 15-minute chart. So we got, a, we, we got a hit and a little move away. But really, it, you know, after about six candles, it kind of stalled out on us. And when we look at the fact that we, on our four hour, the fact that we were in an upward trend, um, you know, that has to be a confirmation entry anyway. So you may or may not have gotten filled. If you did get filled, you, you're out at the six candle rule. Realistically, because it's in an uptrend, the six candle rule, uh, the, uh, the, the confirmation entry comes into play. And so you got no real reason. But notice what happened in the overnight. In the overnight, that level, old area of supply acts as a little area of demand. We got a little bit of a move away. So if you were able to catch that one, then that was probably a pretty good move uh, coming up off of that zone. So what are we looking at for today? Well, our four-hour trend is back to being up. We had a little bit of a pullback, but it was, uh, it was nothing too, too great uh, you know, from a four-hour perspective. And so when I look at this overall, heading into the weekend, what, what levels do we have of potential price action where we could see movement? Well, you know, we, we do have some hourly levels of demand below us with all of these wicks, but I'm going to come to this area here, which is the wick over wick area, which still remains untouched. Now, we've got two of them here. We've got this one down here, and we have this one right here. Typically, I prefer levels that are closer to pivots for strong entries. And so when I have one level on top of the other like this, the way I prefer to play it is that the first level is a confirmation entry. The second level is a limit entry. And so that if I miss out on the first entry, I'm okay with that because the second entry is, you know, closer to the pivot and that's right around market open anyway. Oftentimes going to be a better level. In the NASDAQ, similar picture to what we just talked about in that our hourly chart, we rallied up to the to the top up here. We didn't get above this pivot, uh, but we did get six candles and no real movement. Now, if we do come down today, uh, this morning, if we do come down this morning, you would look to the origin of the big move, which is right in here. Now, this one's a bit cleaner than the other markets, and this big move up, this rip higher, was on the uh, the earnings announcements from some of our some of our major Fang stocks uh, that that caused that to occur. If I take a look at the similar levels here that we have to the S&P, I would say it's this area here. But then this one, I think, is a better level right at the origin of this move. Now, remember, if you look at a stock like Apple, um, Apple closed the day yesterday at 384. This morning, it looks like we're trading at about, you know, based on pre and post market around 408. Right. So a pretty big gap up looks to be occurring. And I, I just pulled Apple. But, you know, you don't have to be a genius to know that because, of what happened with this big strong move up. Now, might we also get a little bit of a fade this morning, right? Might we get a bit of a fade this morning of the gap of some of these stocks? And if we look at the the Qs themselves, the Nasdaq itself, it you know we're gonna this would be fading the gap and playing back into where the gap occurred um, on that market. Because if I were to, to turn off, uh, if I were to turn off my uh, extended hours. 
you will see that that would be the origin of this move right in here um, if we don't see any of the Globex session. And all we're doing now is looking at the cash session. Remember, the cash session is the futures market session that's traded while the, uh, while the equity markets are also open is the, best way to, is the best way to state that. Okay? All right, so let's uh, close. Let me put my Globex uh, markets back on. Uh, in the Russell, now in the Russell, we also had a, uh, a very similar picture to the other markets where we had a little bit of a potential supply area in here. Um, and we had taken, you know, this wick over wick and then this area up here. We actually took a little bit of a level on top of a level approach yesterday um, with this. And I, I know it's in green, but it was, in, it was really a purple level because we had had um, two zones. And our first zone was this area here, and then the other one was this unbalanced wick over wick. And price just came into there and just gave us no real strong reaction off of there. Now, we did wind up making a move off of there a bit later, um, uh, but not, not, uh, not in any strength to tell us that, okay, we anticipate this strong price movement. So now where are we? Well, on a four-hour chart, we are very much in a sideways market action um, we're sitting right at a, a decent supply area here on the four hour, actually. If you look at this region right over here to the left, we're, we're at the origin of that very strong move down, but we're basing in front of that level. And typically when you're basing in front of a level like this, you don't anticipate a huge movement out of that zone. So I will, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap my lines around that area, knowing that, that if we do get a bit of a breakout above this um, 1507 area and we get basing in front of it, then I've got I've to be, be quick to take any money off the table, right? I mean, there's still something to be made here, provided that I don't have uh, too, too much, uh, you know, uh, you know I, that I get the basing and I don't have too much risk in that position because my, my last pivot is not too far away from the breakout. Uh, so you could still, you know, pull a few points out of here. Uh, and by the way, eight to 10 points in the Russell is nothing to sneeze at. It's not a bad return at all. Uh, you just have to make sure that it's consummate to the risk that you're willing to take in that position. Okay, next, let's move over to our commodity markets. So starting with crude oil. Now, in crude oil yesterday, we showed uh, this area that we had a really nice move. For those of you that were with us on our live session on Wednesday, you got a little move off that 15-minute zone, uh, and then price broke through that little 15-minute zone. Now, I've changed the color to goldenrod. Yes, that's a word, goldenrod. Um, and why did I change it to gold? The reason I did was because now we anticipate that this could become a flip level, an area where old demand acts as new supply. And so I'm going to leave that level in place because I think that that could be a decent reversal upon the return. In the meantime, um, we actually have started to see, you know, we had some momentum that slowed down and now we're seeing a bit of a rollover in these markets. Uh, not a whole lot in there for me to do today aside from wait for a good setup for a potential breakdown which we may be getting right through here. So if you want to take a short off of this level, especially if we get a little, another little bounce and it stays, if we get another little bounce and it stays below this pivot, so this green candle comes up and maybe we come down and then we get basing, <laughs> that would be where we would want to get short. That's the setup that we would look for for a potential, uh, potential move down. But I need, you know, I, I still need some stars to align, if you will. Uh, gold. Taking a look at our gold markets, yesterday we had had this gap fill area as a potential trade. Uh, price did not come there, so I don't feel bad about missing out on this trade because I didn't, I, I'd had it as a confirmation anyway. Uh, but price came really close and was unable to get us filled or get us in. So I'm going to remove that gap fill level at this point, and I'm going to look a bit higher to this area right in here uh, as where I think our, our better level just might be. Now, I know this is late in the day. Uh, the, as we kick off into the Globex session, but sometimes that's actually not too, too bad of a time because it's the Australian market open, and we may see a reversal coming back from here. So where am I shorting? Where's my shorting opportunities? Now that gold has gotten over the $2,000 mark, you know, gold stalled up here at the $2,000 mark. We poked above the $2,000 mark, and then we immediately came right back down below it. Uh, so I think that we may pull back you know, just a little bit. If we pulled back 1% off the $2,000 mark, it pulls us to around 1980. Uh, and that wouldn't be too shocking of a move down. Now, why is that important? That's important because that gives us an opportunity to look at a place where we may want to get back in, which puts us right back into here. Um, and, and there's going to be computerized 
pro, you know, there's going to be computer programs that say, listen, once we break above the, two, the, the whole round number of 2,000, let's let it pull back 1% and then get long. And so that's a strong possibility, and that's another reason why I feel decent about this area right in here for a potential reversal. Now, where am I shorting? Well, I already read the shirt to you. You don't tug on Superman's cape, you don't spit to the wind, and you don't short the all-time high. We're not shorting this thing. And I've read, I read so many tweets from all of these freaking thin twit gurus that are telling me, did you catch our short in gold? If you keep shorting gold on the way up, you're going to blow up your account. Stop it. Um, I just, I, I, you know, I have a really hard time listening to somebody who's telling me about all the money they're making shorting gold when we're at all time highs. I just, I mean, I just don't understand how you're identifying where that top's going to be. Um, you know, I'd love to say that there's a technical reason for knowing it, but there's not, um, you know, we can have, you know, Fibonacci extensions and projections, but we're not looking to short the all time high in gold. We're looking to buy long pullbacks. And when the market gives me a quality breakdown setup, and we see that our momentum has shifted in our all-time high move, then we will be willing to go short. But until then, don't try to fight this trend. All right, I'm off my soapbox. All right, nat gas. So in our natural gas positions, we, we do still have uh, a gap area right here where we could see a return in nat gas. That area is still uh, something that we will pay attention to. We have a, a little bit of a, of a topping pattern here, and so be aware that that is a bit of a topping pattern. On the four hour, it's just a pullback. But on the one hour chart, it actually is a bit of a topping pattern, uh, which oftentimes occurs. And so if that is the case, let me move to a smaller time period. Um, if we think that's the case, I will say, you know, I was going to wrap my lines around this area here, but, the, but this wick right here ruins it for me. If you notice, you look at this little wick right here. This wick means price came all the way down to here, and then we retested, and then we dropped away. So I can't use this level again. And, and it's already it's already been, um, I don't want to say it's weakened. Well, it's definitely weakened, but it's not gone. It's still a valid supply level because it still exists. It's just not got the same high degree of probability. And so um, if you want to take a potential long on a breakout to the upside, I would look above this region here. Uh, copper. So in copper yesterday, we got a really nice five to one move off of our 15 minute zone. So we had this little uh move right there price rallied into there and we got a strong strong move away the second time in we got a little move away and then we got basing in front of the level and then no surprise it popped which is the exactly what we what we would anticipate happening in this kind of a zone so hopefully you were able to take that ride uh, and then price just kind of chopped around that zone showing that it became a true kind of fair price area so now when i look at it i'm still going to look to this area right here as that old area of demand could potentially be a good supply area coming right back through here. Those are oftentimes going to be magnets for price. So let's look for this as a potential reversal. Now, remember, it's in purple. So if it's in purple, our six candle rule tells us that we can't get in unless it's, uh, or we, 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 get, we, we have six candles worth of time before we would get out. And we got to look for basing on the six, on the 15 minute chart before to see if it would make sense to stay in that trade. In our soybean position, so let's look at soy. So soy yesterday, we had an hourly level that just boop, popped right through. No good, uh, just popped right through our hourly level in soy uh, on that long wick for a small stop out. And then our second level, one, two, three, four, five, six candles later, price had gone nowhere. So technically, this one hasn't been stopped out as of yet, but it, but it gave you six candle rule, told you to go nowhere. So that's two in a row uh, shorts, one that failed and one that gave us a break even stop out. So what does that tell us about going to the well on these shorts? It tells us that we're now in a kind of a sideways price action and maybe short is not going to be the, the best way to go. So I am not going to going to jump into this trade here because the, the, my next my next obvious short would be this area up in here. And I'm not just going to jump into that. I'm going to be a little bit more cautious of that one utilizing a confirmation entry. Um, but my longs, I'm going to look at this area right here for a potential long. Now, why this area? This area here, because it was resistance, resistance. If you look at where this hit, this was exactly resistance. We have a little wick, unbalanced wick over wick here. We do have the price came up and then came back down, but it's not yet been retested. And I still think that we could, could retouch that zone. All right. Corn, for those of you that trade the corn markets, 
Uh, we had a, on our 60 minute level, we got a, a little bit of a move away, about a two to one, and then it just kind of stalled out. So we did get a better move away in corn. Um, if you are still in that trade, you should take some profits at this point because we're seeing a little bit of a sideways movement. Uh, technically, you're, you're not stopped out, but you should take some profits off the table. We do have a supply level still up here that is valid. All right, moving over to our bonds and currency markets. In our bonds and currency markets, first starting with the ZN, we continue our march higher. Our bond markets uh, finally were able to clip through this level here, and it was all based upon the fact that we uh, are are having, you know, the, all signs point to another round of stimulus, uh, which would right, raise the price of bonds, lowering the yields. Um, and you're starting to get more and more people that as we continue to march higher are getting more and more nervous. And so the demand for bond funds is getting higher, even though the, the rates aren't changing all that much. So you would look for a pullback to a quality area of demand at this point. On our four-hour charts, I think it would be right in this region in here. And so uh, that's the level that I'm going to identify as our potential bigger picture turning point. Uh, in the Aussie, so we had an Aussie confirmation short. Uh, was a confirmation short because our big picture is still going up. So we had that level in play, and price went right through there without giving us an entry. No problem. Oftentimes, though, old supply acts as new demand, and we're starting to get a little bit of a move away from that zone. So if you're not in there and you want to give that a try, look for a potential breakout above this region here uh, as a chance to get long. Uh, we could continue to pull back, and if we continue to pull back, we can maybe look to this area in here for a potential reversal. Uh, in the euro, same thing in the euro, exact same picture in the euro as we had in the S&P, but oftentimes those old areas, excuse me, not the S&P, the, uh, the Aussie, those old areas of confirmation short become really good areas to get long. And I, I got a couple of text messages from members yesterday, um, and, uh, and one of the things that we were talking about was taking old supply, turning to new demand. So this actually gave you a really good entry. Leave me a comment down below. Were you able to catch some of this entry and allow some of that price movement to occur? So um, what I'm going to do now is remove that level. We do have a little wick over wick area here that we're coming close to. We're not in it as of yet. On our four-hour chart, we are way extended, right? But it, but it doesn't mean that we have to come down much further. So I'm going to take a look at this area right here, this 1.1824, uh, because it was old resistance right through here. And when I come to the 15-minute chart, that puts me right in this region. And so I'm going to look at this area right here as our 15-minute potential area of demand. It lines up really well with the prior area identified. And so that might be a decent opportunity for a reversal. Uh, Canadian dollar, so in our Canadian dollar, we, we had price come up to our 15 minute level and it, it, uh, it tickled the zone. We'll call it tickling the zone. It tickled the zone, may or may not have gotten you in the trade depending on your line placement. Uh, for me, it missed by a two ticks, uh, which is frustrating as all heck. But, um, Level's not dead. It just switches to a confirmation entry. Uh, came down to where our target would have been uh, and then uh, and then popped away from there. Now, this this was a also a potential breakdown trade, but we did not get any basing in front of the level. So that that the, 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 the breakdown was just non-existent with no basing in front of the level. So this area up here still exists for a potential short on a retest, uh, if indeed that we trade halfway into it before coming out. Uh, Great British Pound, that's another one that just continues to march higher. Uh, as we continue to march higher, if I look at the four-hour chart, we can see that we're coming to this area of supply way, way, way up here, um, which if you look at the daily, and I don't normally look at daily levels, is technically a daily area of supply, right? So technically, we're coming into a daily area of supply, um, but this area was a retest of some of these areas over here to the left. And so I think that we've got a chance to make it all the way up to here. So this is multiple days in a row of the British pound, uh, gaining strength against the dollar. And with that strength, um, uh, I think that we're going to see, you know, we're starting to see a little bit of a slowdown. We may get a rollover. And if we get a rollover back into here, this is our better entry. Now we're seeing a whole lot of demand levels below us and those demand levels that are below us. Are really um, are really still in play, 
But just understand that we may not get back to these anytime soon. And by the time we do, we could have shifted our trend to a downtrend. So yes, even though these demand levels are still valid below us, they may switch to confirmation entries because our trend may change by then. Uh, and then last but certainly not least, the Japanese yen, although it might be least today because there's really no trades to take. Um, we identified this level here on the four hour. Price came really close to getting us in on that four hour without an entry. And so now we're coming back down. Um, I'm going to remove that line completely. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to look at that on a, as a short opportunity. And so I'm not really going to add much to this level because my big picture trend is still up. So I don't want to take any of these supply levels up here uh, because my big picture trend is still definitely to the upside. But my demand level here, man, we went sideways for a long time in there and I don't rely on those levels very often. So I'm just not going to add anything new to our Japanese yen trades. So that's a, I know we went a little bit longer today than we normally do. Uh, 20 minutes is t typically longer than what we normally do in our daily market commentaries, but I wanted to cover all of the markets and just know that we're heading into a weekend. So whenever we head into a weekend, we know one thing remains true, is that we've got a better probability for a gap or a better possibility for a gap, I think is a better way to say it, and your stop does not protect you over the weekend. So make sure that if you understand how to use options on futures, that you protect your positions over the weekend with options on futures so that you are not left exposed and in the hole. Now, if you are, if you are not familiar with how to use options on futures, I would say that a really good thing to do is go to our free trading videos. So if you go to tradersarmy.com uh, and you have a free membership, all you've got to do is go to free trading videos, and the first video you'll see on there is combining options with futures. There's a lot of free material there at tradersarmy.com. Feel free to watch. We probably have 50 hours of, of, uh, of free con educational trading content on there, but uh, combining options on futures is one of them that could certainly, certainly help you the most uh, as you head into the, uh, the weekend. And then, you know, buy yourself a, buy yourself a pair of Traders Army socks in order to, in order to really look good. And remember, all of our merch store stuff is going to go to charity. So, all right, everybody, I hope you have a great day. Until next week, uh, I will talk to you soon on Thank You So Much. See ya.